Mr. Primetime, training camp preview, running backs, a hot topic last year, a hot top the whole entire offseason. And I think we're going to have the same conversation this year we had last year. And I guess we'll start with Le'Veon Bell. Your expectations this year, man. Well, let me just start because, you know, a few months ago, I don't know if you remember when we were doing the, the draft videos, almost everybody in that Zoom chat was pretty much – accepting of the fact that Le'Veon Bell wasn't going to be a Jet beyond this year. Yeah. And that take still just drives me nuts because we've been searching so long for a player with his offensive skill set since, what, Curtis Martin probably? Yeah. And so the fact that now we finally have it and we have the young quarterback that we just talked about, um, the fact that we can't make that work with the two of them, you know, I'm watching that closely this year. You know, to me, that's going to be a huge test for Gase, how he, you know, gets the most out of Le'Veon Bell, how he uses him, hopefully different from last year, instead of just running him right up the middle. Um, the guy could do it all. He's one of the most talented backs in all of football. Yes, I think there was a little bit of a rust factor last year, but, you know, even 80% of Le'Veon Bell is still better than most backs in this league. Um, he could still catch it out of the backfield as good as anybody. He can make any guy miss one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so yeah, he's, he's a patient style of runner. So that's different from, you know, I think a little bit of what Gase calls, but again, that's why it's on Gase to kind of adjust to what he has. And again, a player like Bell who put up what he put up in Pittsburgh, you should be able to get that kind of production out of him here. Yeah. I think last year we expected a lot of him. I think there was a rush factor. He could be banged up to the play calling didn't help. The line play didn't help. A lot of things were stacked against him. The quarterback being out didn't help when he Luke Falk went in. And I think this offseason, I think, I'm hoping, obviously, that Gase did some self-scouting, Le'Veon did some self-scouting. So, listen, let's find ways to make this work this year. Yeah. It, it benefits Gase. It benefits Bell. Um, you could run behind Beckton, dude. The guy's a mammoth guy. Find ways to incorporate him in the running game, get him active in the passing game. And, and dude, get him 25 touches a game. Like, there's no, nothing wrong with that, especially when you're trying to – like, the easiest thing to do is run block, man. So, just get all these guys, run block, get him – just get him going. And, you know, and I think he can still do it. I, I expect big things, to be honest with you. I think, he's, in my opinion, he's playing for a contract. I'm the guy that's saying he's going to be gone next yeah. year. So, I think he's got a chip on his shoulder. And, you know what, I think he could be, your, he could be the bell cow guy that's going to get everything going, especially the first four or five weeks of the season. So, I think, you know, if he's used correctly, which is a big if, I think it'll be okay. Um, my concern is that that's – will that happen? You know, and I, we can't really guarantee that. You know, we don't know – you know, every, it seemed like last year Gase said he's going to study the Pittsburgh Steelers offense to see how they use them and use them that way. He said the same thing this offseason. Will that happen? Yeah. I, I mean, I have really and, no, no idea. And, and you worry because Gase, he's known for using the, you know, backfield by committee approach. You know, yep. he brings back Frank Gore. Um, they draft P. Ryan in, you know, the fourth round. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of signs that they're at least, um, you know, kind of planting the seeds to get everybody involved in the backfield. But th there's no reason why a guy like Le'Veon Bell, like you said, shouldn't touch the ball 25 times a game and, you know, be used in the slot and just be maximized for his value because he can change an offense. He has that ability. Yeah, I mean, if Gase wants to be this pass-happy guy, th get him the ball out of the backfield. Throw him, like, just throw him the football. Like, you know, you find ways to get him involved in every way you can, especially when the wide receiver group isn't that strong. So you go from him. I, I, to be honest with you, I like the running back depth on this team. I, mean, I like the last year, too, so it shows you how much I know. I thought Powell and Montgomery were two good backs, but seriously, huh. I, I clearly didn't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. But now you got to kind of think that, you know, Gase is getting his guys. So P. Ryan is his guy. Gore is his guy. Um, Joe Douglas loves Josh Adams, which, I, I mean, how could he blame him from Notre Dame? I mean, who yeah. doesn't like Notre Dame? And you have Kenneth Dixon, too. Kenneth Dixon's a bruising guy. So you have, you have your short yardage guys. You have Gore, you have Dixon. Trenton Cannon's your speed guy if he can stay healthy. You have a little bit of everything. But to me, it's like I, it should all start with Bell. Like the Jets running game, I think, should be front and center because of all the uncertainty. And like we did the quarterback video before, and I think I'm going ground the pound. I'm going to feature it. I'm going to find innovative ways to get this ball going on the ground, to free up play action pass, to preserve Sam Darnold and everything else. And it starts with Bell, dude. And I don't see why it shouldn't. Yeah, as Bell goes, I think the Jets' offense will go. And if you have Bell as the focal point of a lot of defenses where they're putting Nate in the box to, to try and stop him, that'll only help Sam Darnold and open things up, you know, over the top. You, know, you have Mims and Perriman with 4-3 speed. Um, you, you can't defend everybody. So if you're focused on Bell, you know, hopefully those guys can still burn you deep and you have to worry about them with the safety up top. And, yeah, it's just it, – it's a matter of gaze, like you said. He, he was going to study the Pittsburgh offense to see how Bell was used. He was a dominant player in Pittsburgh – he should be a dominant player here. Yeah, and the thing is, too, is like P. Ryan is a very good pass catcher. You know, so you have, you have guys that are pretty versatile. You know what I mean? You have some speed. You have, you have a little bit of everything here. Now it's a matter of trying to incorporate it. Like, I, I mean, I, everybody's trying to sell me on this Frank Gore thing where his leadership and his this and his that and all his work ethic, and that's great. 
But at some point, you want explosive talent on the field. And, you know, Josh Adams has a little bit burst. Trent Cannon obviously has it. P. Ryan's got a little giddy up. Like, you know, for Gore to come on the field to run the ball and for, you know, one yard, four carries, whatever. You know, like, you want a guy that can make some, like, game-breaking plays and move the sticks and give you a little bit extra. You know, if Gore gets three or four carries a game, fine. But that's more than enough, in my opinion. But I want to see the young guys. Like, and it, this is, like, you, for me, it's, like, you want to try to find building blocks for the future. Like, you want to get production this year. But you also want to say, okay, listen, we're establishing you this year so we know what we have next year. So, for me, you want to see Piran get how many carries a game? What, seven, six, seven? He's got to get at least something, right? You got to get, you got to start showing him something, man. I mean, if you're resigned to the fact that Le'Veon Bell's not going to be here, then yeah, potentially you, you'd have to get Piran involved. But at the same time, I, I feel like the, the best player to help you win games is, is Le'Veon Bell. He's supposed to be your bell cow. So it's going to be interesting how they split up the carries. Hopefully it's not Frank or, you know, getting five, 10 carries a game. That would drive me nuts. Like it would you, um, I don't see any reason for that. I have no problem with him, you know, in a Jets uniform as, you know, a locker room guy, a mentor or whatever. But I, I also don't see like, Le'Veon Bell, he was a mentor last year. He was a leader last year. Yeah, we watched him every day in training camp. He yeah. handled himself perfectly here. You know, he was working out on the sidelines the whole time. Exactly. He did said the right thing every single day, every week. So, um, you know, having another guy like that, it doesn't hurt. But to use a guy like that to take away carries from younger guys, I think that would be a mistake. So I'd like to see a little bit of P. Ryan, but I'd, I'd also like to see a lot of Trenton Cannon. I know a lot of people don't like him, but, you know, just the, the speed factor alone, I think he brings a different dynamic to this offense. Uh, I remember one of, uh, one of the practices last year, uh, C.J. Mosley, he was, you know, healthy for all of training camp. And he was our best coverage linebacker. And Cannon just dusted him on a wheel route, you know, beat him by like 10 yards, got behind him. And nobody did that to Mosley last summer. So yeah, I think Cannon has plenty of ability with his speed, plus the fact that he's a special teams guy. He can return kicks. Um, I think that makes him valuable as well. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see one of those gadget players kind of step up in this offense. Somebody that has speed that you can move around a little bit that the defense has to worry about out of the backfield, uh, whether it's Adams or Cannon, um, somebody to kind of compliment Bell. I think that would be nice. Well, yeah, that was the one thing we had our, with our draft shows we talked about. And I kept saying, listen, I want explosive playmakers. Yep. You want your Tariq Cohen. You want your Tyreek Hill. That's the future of the NFL, man. You want match, mismatches all over the field, like where a safety and linebacker can't cover your running back. You want those kind of matchups. And Trenton Cannon can give you that. I'm not sure Josh Adams can, but Trenton Cannon is that explosive. Now it's a matter of keeping him healthy and stop fumbling. You know what I mean? Yep. But, you know, the thing with Gore, and I said the same thing. It's just, you know. The one thing about Le'Veon Bell, and like I said, we're, for, we're real fortunate, you more than me, is to go to practice. And, you know, I, was, I fanboyed out the entire time I was there watching Le'Veon yeah. Bell because, like, yeah. I'm just a fan of his. But you watch him on the field practice, and the minute he would go off the field, he'd be with Heinz Ward and other guys doing receiving drills. I remember he'd be laying on the back, catching passes, catching passes. He was always doing something on the sideline, keeping himself busy, always working something. And, and then that, when you watch the other practices, he was, he's always on the sideline doing something, but he's always working on his craft, though. He wasn't, like – there was times where you would watch like Brandon Marshall in the past, like other prime time players, yep. they do their thing. Then they go to the sideline on their knee, helmet down, kind of chill out. Lady on bell kept busy. The entire training camp, he was always yep. doing something. Yep. During the conditioning drills. I remember, I'm, I'm sure you remember that where he did it with the running backs and then he did it again with the offensive line. And I think he also did it with the linebacking group. He ran it three yep. times. And then during the green and white scrimmage also, I, I remember yep. that we were there early. He was just ru like running back yep. and forth doing like hurricanes across the field yep. while everyone else was just kind of warming up and getting ready. So yep. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell, he, to me, he's a leader. I, I know he has a reputation, but what he's done in New York, everything that he's said to the media, especially during last – yeah, especially during last year when, you know, shit hit the fan with a lot of different players. Um, you know, he was the one guy that wasn't a problem. So um, – I'm a huge fan of Bell. I'd like to see him a jet for, you know, the length of his contract. I don't know how realistic that is. Um, but if anybody's going to steal carries from him, hopefully it's not Gore. Hopefully it's, you know, a guy like P Ryan or, um, you know, Adams or Cannon, somebody that's young, that brings a different dynamic to the offense. So you say, if you have, say it's 30 carries a game for the running backs, that's your, say like for that's the script, 30 carries a game, 30 rushes a game. How would you break it down per the running backs? Who would you give it to? 20 for Bell seven for P Ryan and then mix around three for Gore and whoever else. Yeah. No, I I'd, I'd have something like that. that. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'd be the same way. Like I'm featuring him. And if you want, like you said, P Ryan, it can catch the ball out of backfield. You want to do that. See more two back sets with Bell. Like the empty backfield set drives me crazy. I want to see more of two back sets. I want to see, you know, those guys back there at Sam because Bell's excellent blitz pickup, you know, Frank Gore is too, to be honest yep. with you. So like, that's kind of something that can help you. That, and that, that's what drove me nuts last year because Powell and Montgomery, they were the same way. Yep. Excellent in blitz pickup, and they can catch the ball out of the backfield. And rarely did you see them on the field together with, with yep. Bell. So 
that drove me insane. So that's something. But like, so if you're evaluating the running back position, because like obviously this is like a training camp preview, so we're trying to figure out positions of strength, positions of concern, everything else. You know, quarterback we feel comfortable with. Running back, obviously, to me is no issue. I think there's plenty of talent, there's plenty of depth. If God forbid Bell does go down, I think there's serviceable back us behind him. You know, I think I think P. Ryan and Josh Adams and I think we call Trenton Cannon sharp. I think they have enough talent to get by if Bell got banged up. I mean, what what's your thoughts on that? I'd be a little bit concerned if Bell got banged up just because P. Ryan's a little bit unknown and Frank Gore is obviously up there in age. Um, I, I would have a little bit of concern about how they would handle the bulk of the carries there. A while. Yeah. No. I, again, I just don't feel like they would have the, the, the Bell cow like Bell. It, it would be a genuine backfield by committee approach like Gase right. likes. So maybe it would be a good thing for his offense. Who knows? But I, I just think, yeah, I mean, I think the running back position, it's – it's good right now. The fact that you have a guy like Bell who can lead that group and, you know, mentor some of the younger guys that are there along with Frank Gore. Um, and like you also touched on, it's, it's a lot of different skill sets that are back there. I think that bodes well. No, I definitely think so too. Like I, like, you know, like I said, they could, and you know what, I wouldn't be surprised. They try to tinker with it a little bit too. And they say, Hey, listen, you know what, when there's some cuts made, look for some upgrades. I mean, they flirted with the, what's his face, Devontae Freeman. They were, you know, they, they were still kicking around their names and they came out with Frank Gore, which whatever, yeah. man, I guess that's uh, yeah. Gase guy, but let's see. Like, I think, you know, if you want to say we need to have a top 15 running offense, I think with Bell on the team and, you know, Beckton, I think that they, there's no reason why they can't have a good running game this year. I think they, should, they have the talent to do it. If Gase can commit to it and establish it, go for it. Yeah, and, and not even just Beckton, but, you know, McGovern as well, or even if you get a, a healthy Brian Winters back. Um, you, know, you, brought, you obviously thought enough of Alex Lewis to bring him back. Yep. Um, and then, you know, whatever you get at right tackle between Fant and uh, Doga or whoever starts there, you know, obviously the offensive line should be improved from last year. You know, we're not saying it's going to be, you know, a top 10 unit, but certainly, you know, it was one of the worst offensive lines that I think any Jeff fan has ever seen last year. So if you could just take, you know, a few steps from that and, you know, get you know, to the middle of the pack, um, yeah, you should have a, a pretty good rushing offense and that should allow, you know, for Sam to do a lot more. All right, so this was part two of our training camp preview. Quarterback, we feel okay. Running back, we feel okay. This is so far things aren't too bad for the Jets. Yeah, until we get to the receivers tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're watching, the, are, you still, are we still taping? Because we're watching yeah, this video. Yeah. Please subscribe to our videos. We never promote ourselves ever. We're yeah. not good at promoting. We're not good at anything. So please subscribe to our channel if you're not already. And that we definitely appreciate it. We broadcast live Tuesday nights at eight o'clock. Um, that's always a good time, and that's it. Yeah, at Talk Jets Radio, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. So give us a follow. Cool. All right. Talk to you guys later.